As you can see, this is uh, my first time live, and I have no clue how this works. So it says it is my most watched live stream yet. Of course, I just need your feedback if if you can see me because my my desktop just. Uh, gave up on me right now, so I am on my phone. Uh, I hope I am not uh, cross because my phone is. So, welcome. I just wanted to uh, experiment with this Facebook Live. You're kind of sideways. Okay, fine. Not kind of, I was, I am. Oh, looks like it is okay. Yes, yes, cross. Okay. Better to be cross than on the cross. Okay. Is it okay now? Do you see the divine light on top of me? Always. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste. Okay. So, uh, for some reason I thought I should be able to hear you, but I can't. So, if you could write something, it will be great. Hi Chantal, hi Wendy, looks like, uh, looks like Canada has woken up. Hello Mao, Savadika, Vasanti, how are you, Kate, hello, Anti, looks like my sisters are sitting together and watching me. Laurence, hi, hello Delhi people, there is some nice behind like a fan or so, yes, AC, is it too loud Meera, is the AC too loud, sorry this is, uh, uh, okay, let me switch it off. So we will start with Laurent's question. <clears throat> Hi Vasanti. Okay, Laurence has asked that uh, she would like to know something about Saucha. Uh, Saucha, the way I understand or the way Patanjali intends to say or uh, talk about is uh, uh, cleanliness. Uh, so, if we have to look at the broad uh, understanding of cleanliness or hygiene, it could be as simple as physical cleanliness or uh, mental cleanliness. But uh, since niyama or uh, um, observances are for personal um, uh, development, Patanjali is mainly talking about maintaining your um, health of your body, health of your mind um, and uh, once your body and mind is healthy then the whole process of mental exploration which is Raja Yoga or which is Yoga of Patanjali is uh, made easy. So Laurence didn't you say Saucha or did you say Santosha? Uh, one moment. Yes, you said Saucha. So, Saucha is cleanliness, hygiene, taking care of yourself to maintain the body at the gross level, to maintain the mind at subtle level and uh, continuing the process of physical and mental exploration. Yes, Saucha. Is that right? Saucha is hygiene, cleanliness. And Saucha is followed by Santosha, that is contentment. But contentment is totally a mental aspect. And um, 
Shaucha starts at the gross level, physical, then slowly. Do you think yoga is art of Shaucha? Yes. I mean, Laurence is asking, do you think yoga is the art of Shaucha? Yes. I mean, yoga, as I understand, is path of self-refinement. And if you see refinement as cleanliness, cleaning yourself out of uh, all the dirt and samskaras and limitations and conditionings that we have wrapped ourselves around since last many lifetimes, then yes, yoga is the art of saucha. That's a very good uh, broad definition of yoga. Uh, I totally, totally agree with you, Laurence, that yoga is the art of saucha. Yes, saucha in a greater sense. Saucha as in cleaning the mind of all the residues, all the samskaras as it is written in Yoga Sutra, all the limiting tendencies which stop us from understanding who we truly are. And according to Patanjali, who we are truly, we are nothing but the true self. As he says, Tada drushtu swarupe avasthanam. Swarup means the real self, the, the self beyond the mind, the self that is not affected by uh, the up and down of the mind, the up and down of life and so on. Merci beaucoup. Any questions or any conversations? What did you have for lunch today? How was your Sunday? Junet Bhai, how are you? Hmm, I should be happy. Fifteen people. I feel like a celebrity. Thank you. I have no idea how this works and I promise you I'll get better at this once I figure this all out. All good. Sing us something, Jordan, come on. <laughs> Uh, okay, maybe. Meditation. Lynn, what about meditation? Rona, Bokartov. I look tired, yes, because I was working very hardly last three days and today is my really, uh, real free day. So, uh, I slept quite a bit and uh, just came back from my gym, so... It is all good. Lynn, what did you ask about meditation? What about meditation? Wow, this is amazing. The technology is brilliant. <clears throat> Where are you? I am at home, Vasanti Thani. Let's meet up sometime, Vasanti. Happy that you share your time with us, Dani. Yes, thank you. My plan is to do this uh, at least once a week. Hi, I'm Rudul. Uh, and uh, discuss, make a topic and uh, have conversations on that. So if all of you could join the conversations and add... Uh, your valuable insights in that conversation, it'll be great. We have to take advantage of the technology. So, I am at work today. Uh, okay. What do you want to tell us today? Your choice. <laughs> okay. What do I want to tell you today? Well, all, all the students will know exactly what I want to tell everybody today. Uh, and that is, uh, do your sadhana. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing, nothing more than that. Right? So, every time the first, uh, every time the first suggestion, recommendation to the students is, do your sadhana. Many times what happens is, yes, Samir, I'll take that question. 
many times what happens is we feel that yoga or self development is all about reading all about knowing all about having knowledge but as what i understand yoga is not about gaining knowledge yoga is revealing knowledge yoga is not an invention yoga is a discovery and you can discover only what you what there is and yoga is a path of self discovery is not a path of self invention and uh, in that sense you are the self you are the peaceful within uh, and you just have to find it so it's not it's not something that comes from outside it's not something that can, you can buy from the market it's not something that you can uh, generate by reading 10000 books so for me yoga is up more about losing than uh, about uh, gaining hmm? yes jordan simple very simple but doing that simple can get a little challenging all right who else samir was saying would love to hear you speak on self development and self motivation samir for me self development and self motivation are based on three or four main things number 1 trusting the process that we have to trust the very process that we are committed to number 2 uh self motivation motivating yourself we need to find or create a mechanism through which we can create our own drive yes trust uh, leticia trust and faith you can understand as the same thing trust in the process in the sense uh, that the process is going to reveal things to me if you don't trust uh, then the process will not work it's like this you fly in a plane and uh, yes ron i'll come to you you fly in the plane and you don't know who's flying you you don't know the name of the pilot but you sit in the airline and uh, you allow the pilot to take you nine, at 90000 feet and land you after 6 7 8 10 hours of flight so you ultimately your journey is about trusting the fire pilot to take you up in the sky and then drop you down or not drop you down land you uh, same way the process of yoga or self development is a process of trust the more you trust the easier the effortless the process uh, happens and that's why for me trust is the main thing second is having a continuous uh, force of self motivation you can look around for motivation but ultimately you need to generate a very strong powerhouse of self motivation within that can propel you further thirdly i feel discipline is the most important part even if get if it gets boring even if it gets uh, monotonous even if it feels like a chore you need to have that drive that uh, spirit that grit to do your sadhana do your practice do your whatever you call as a process every day so i hope samir that's a very short answer uh, or suggestion and uh, we'll discuss when we meet or whenever we are when we happen to talk uh rona rona is saying happy to see you please tell us something about bhagavad gita and the violent world today i feel if everybody understands bhagavad gita i'm not saying reads bhagavad gita i'm not saying studies bhagavad gita i'm saying if everybody understands bhagavad gita to the heart if everybody gets what bhagavad gita is saying gets ha huh? it's like you listen to music but many of us tap the feet to music hmm so some people they don't react to music they are just listening to music and say oh wow nice but some people bam they just can't stop dancing to the beats 
that is what I say getting it. Uh, so Bhagavad Gita, you need to get Bhagavad Gita. And once you get Bhagavad Gita, uh, nobody will ever fight. Nobody will ever fight. Though uh, um, it's an oxymoron because Bhagavad Gita is, is, itself is a scripture that was revealed on the battlefield. But the lessons of Bhagavad Gita, the, the revelation of Bhagavad Gita is such that if you follow through Bhagavad Gita, if you imbibe Bhagavad Gita, you will never fight with anybody. You will only fight with your own inner enemy, which is your limited mind. Junaid. Junaid says, what do you think in, is the relevance of yoga in people's day-to-day -day life and relationships? Junaid, why we all live in our own mind. And whatever our mind imagines, we project in the world. So, 7.5 billion people, 7.5 billion words. The way I see it, it's like that. We all are living in our own subjective way or subjective interpretation of the world. How yoga is relevant is yoga ultimately makes us realize the common denominator within all of us. Yoga does not, a proper understanding or revelation of yoga will not will will close the gap of me and you us versus them and if the gap between us versus them closes then there there's no conflict in the world and today you see everything is conflict the states are fighting the countries are fighting the people are fighting once we can see the common denominator the common self the truth within each and every person and each and every being including plants animals and people, there'll be no violence, there'll be no cheating, there'll be no manipulation. So I feel that's the biggest contribution of yogic transformation in today's world. So my, uh, so Anita Naik says, so the self is, self in the process is important as is or more than the process itself. No, I, I feel the process is more important. The process is such that if you give yourself into the process 100%, you forget the subject and the object. For example, in Bhakti Yoga it happens. The Bhakta becomes so involved in the process of Bhakti, devotion, that uh, the Bhakta forgets who he is and what he is praying for. Hmm? Thanks, Junaid Bhai. Uh, process is important. You can call yourself a yogi, but if you are not doing your yoga, <laughs> that is the process, it's useless. You might as well call, call yourself a dinosaur. Shaheen, what, is means, what means self-immersion? Rahul Wali, hi. Vilayavan, Savadika. Leticia, because with sadhana my needs have changed. I don't need people around me think my life is. Wait, um, what do you think about the example? No, a real sadhana, Leticia, I think the real sadhana will bring you closer to people. If, if your sadhana is making you move away from people, it is temporary. It is because you want to move inward, which is also a process. But I feel a real sadhana will comes out with compassion. And that compassion will not make you separate from the other. Ha, your your uh, needs will change. Your uh, idea of joy will change. Your idea of time will change. Everything, all the old concepts will change. But you will not start not loving people. You will not start hating the world. If, this is something that I want to say, if your yoga is making you hate the world, then you need to really, really inspect what kind of yoga you're doing. Again, I'm saying, if your yoga practice is creating a huge separation between you and the people around you, is giving you a superiority complex, then you need to really inspect what yoga you are practicing because 
yoga ultimately makes us realize the commonality between all and if that commonality is not revealed by your yoga sadhana then you need to really check your yoga sadhana hi pamela that's okay leticia these are these are valid questions in the path of any yogi huh? so the questions will be answered by themselves through the sadhana it's funny in in one way that we have many questions and i i many times feel that many questions are because because uh, we have not yet gone through the sadhana so my my uh, humble prayer is do your sadhana and the sadhana itself your practice itself will reveal a lot of things to you and then the questions will disappear samir is asking hi reshma samir is samir is asking how do you try to achieve peace within yourself your thoughts your actions samir one simple solution don't try if you try to achieve peace you will not achieve peace so peace comes out of effortlessness if you are effortful in wanting the peace peace is going to be away it's like try it's like trying hard to relax it's not possible you cannot try hard to relax hmm hope that answers uh, your question yulia says happy to see you happy to see you yuli how could i explain to my students that losing the control and letting go is positive sometimes it's strongly grounded in the mind yes now yulia as a yoga teacher please understand that it's very difficult many times to explain to students some things because they come from their own subjective reality uh you don't lose effort to making them understand and if they don't understand as a yoga teacher you don't feel bad because there is time and there is a there is a certain maturity which is required to understand what you're saying if your student doesn't have that maturity then perhaps they will not totally agree with what you're saying which is also okay which is okay you don't have to break your head in trying to convince some people about what you're saying remember that as a yoga teacher shahin says hope in hope increases with sadhana and separation thoughts and actions reduce bingo lin hi elizabeth hope you are feeling well lin use of mantra helps to bring us peace clarity and direction yes but not any random mantra i feel that we have a certain psychology and there are many mantras which have to match with that psychology you cannot just pick up a random mantra and uh, start the sadhana of the mantra just because you like it or just because it sounds good no mantra sadhana is like a medicine you have a certain medicine for a certain ailment you don't just keep popping pills because they taste good every mantra has a certain revelation or invocation power so if you are involved in chanting a mantra or if you have mantra sadhana please take the mantra from somebody who understands the science of mantra don't just dabble in mantra because it is it has become a pop song hmm? we'll talk about this later lin that was your question wow this is interesting i can see a lot of love balloon moving thank you so thank you any other questions or any other conversations i think i'll go on for another 10 minutes so we complete half an hour hmm anita nahi prasad do you write books no i am too lazy
No, Laurence, I am no. I don't write books. Uh, I think I am lazy. Maybe one day I will write. Connection stopped. Is because you said all answers will be found in Sadhana nowhere else. So no more chatting. Only Sadhana. Yes. Walk the talk, Leticia. You got it. You got it. But we have to be very patient with the Sadhana. Please remember that. Huh? We have become very impatient in today's time. That we want everything instantly. When, when somebody gets involved in the process of yoga, we have to understand that we are trying to reform something, we are trying to purify something, we are trying to realign something that uh, is really misleading us since last many, 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 many years or lifetimes, if you will. Uh, so it takes a lot of patience and Samir, this, this is the fourth point to what you said. We need a lot of patience and you know it takes a lot of patience and time to, to train yourself. And yoga is also training, self-development is also training and we need to be very patient. Sarah, good morning. Purification is Saucha, correct. Ron, Rona, can you guide us for last five minutes in meditation? Uh, okay, meditation. Rona, my guidance for meditation would be, maybe one day we will do a meditation live. Uh, I'll give you a small, small tip for meditation. Forget the whole meditation. You know, there's a lot of weightage to the word meditation. When we say I'm doing meditation, it comes with a lot of its own concepts and that itself distracts us. I would suggest, Rona, that just sit on a chair, close your eyes and just sit. Don't even tell yourself that you are meditating. Rona, I will guide you in July. And I promise you one day, Rona, we will do meditation live. We will all sit and meditate. I don't know how that will be, but it should be good. Sarah, this is the point I need today. I have been thinking a lot about patience these days. Yes. Patience is a virtue that we need to create. What has happened, especially with yoga people, Yes, Shaheen. With, with, with yoga people, spiritual people or everybody, what has happened is we have, we have lost the joy of waiting for somebody or waiting for something. You remember in the olden days, we used to have a landline phone and then we used to wait for somebody's phone call. Uh, today, what has happened, the communication has become instant. Food has become instant. Pleasures have become instant. And because all this has become instant, we also expect a lot of uh, self-development, peace of mind, uh, joy, empowerment to become instant. But this, is, this will not happen. Self-transformation does not happen in an instant. Self-transformation is not instantaneous. If somebody has told you self-transformation is instantaneous, go to them and get some further guidance. According to me, self-transformation is a long process which tests our patience, which tests our trust, which tests our grit. And uh, that's why there's a beautiful line in one of the scriptures and it says that uh, uh, self-transformation is not for the one who is not courageous. Nayanatmanam balahineyana labhya, as they say. So we need to generate that strength, inner strength, the grit, the, the trust to go. And with that comes patience. Yes, Laurence, self-transformation is the way of life. Many times we are alive, 
many times we are living but we don't know if we are alive so self transformation i feel uh, transformation through yoga makes us live not just keeps us alive you can be alive but you may feel you're not living milin bhai satam namaskar tarini vaidya hello any questions five more minutes i like this so i've extended the time five more minutes looks like america north america is waking up hello canada hello america ravit hmm. yes i will see when we can go live next and uh, i promise you we will do i will declare it much earlier today i just uh, thought of it on a spur of a moment so i just declared it uh half an hour before i'm not prepared when will be the next time for direct yulia i don't know but like i said just now we will uh, i will announce it earlier maybe like 4 5 days prior to going live today i just today i just uh, gave a short note half an hour prior but but i'll do it 4 or 5 days before what i would suggest is if you have any questions or something then i would love to take them otherwise i'm just looking at the phone krishna says hi and asked a question yes anita didi sarah how are you jordan how are you sirena Hello. Can you talk about intentional burn off like what like what we do in a f- forest to ensure the thriving and regeneration? What means intentional burn off Shahin? I don't understand. Is it like uh, um burn off as in as in fatigue or something else can you clarify please parts of forest are set a flame on purpose oh like burning out the old to make room for a new growth in a forest hi ishita Ah okay okay so okay yeah intentional burn off is vairagya the way i see it intentional burn off is letting go if somebody wants to understand what letting go really is then they should study chapter 6 of bhagavad gita chapter 6 the dhyana yoga uh in which in the first uh, verse of that chapter Bhag- krishna clarifies the, what really sanyasa means so of course we need to burn off what is stopping us uh like we do in the forest unless you burn unless you burn off your limiting tendencies unless you burn off to the past stressors attachments it's going to be very difficult to move forward and i i really believe that yoga is or self transformation is more about letting go more about hi hila more about letting go than more about acquiring something so yes we need to let go burn off to sprout the new growth of self 
okay so we'll chat for two more minutes two last questions hello ishita hello veronica long time hope you're well silvia bonjia ivalina lavasritas nayantara namaste in this journey of self transformation nayantara is asking how do i know how far i've gone how do i measure where have i reached the best measurement nayantara is peace of mind so you can ask yourself am i today more peaceful than what i was 3 years ago if your answer is yes continue what you're doing if your answer is no try and seek out what to do don't uh, achieve don't try to think of something very uh, open ended peace of mind joyfulness cheerfulness equal vision compassion uh, lasting awareness of love these are all beautiful qualities with which you can assess your self transformation hope that answers your question nayantara dimpya hello i promise i will uh, make the lights and all better next time my laptop gave up on me so i am on the phone great last one minute jordan is saying a few words on living among others whose live lives actions don't align with your values but are family or close yes i think i wrote a status about that the other day jordan uh it's very natural that we expect our family and friends to walk on the path with us but many a times most of the times they are not in alignment with our um uh, purposeful conscious way of yogic or spiritual life so what do we do remember transform yourself inspire others do your sadhana let your self work inspire them like i said before in this live session that there are many times people who may not understand us who may not uh agree with us even though they are close because they are in a different level of spiritual maturity which is fine you don't need to ostracize them neither do you need to look down upon them you just have to keep in mind that they are at a different level of awareness than you not lower not higher i am not discussing if they are high or they are low i am just saying they are bringing a different level of awareness to their personality so firstly you need to do your own sadhana your own practice and uh, slightly detach from your expectation from them spiritually secondly when you do your sadhana they will get inspired and when their time comes they will come to you when their time comes they will come to you because you will be the closest to them you will uh they will feel trustworthy you will invoke trust in them because all through these years when they did not realize the value of what you were doing you still were there with them so uh, the best help that you can give them is helping yourself first transforming yourself and then allowing your transformation to inspire them yes samir transform yourself inspire others happens to be the slogan line for my teacher training courses hi gurudeep yes as lin says they will notice your peace and want it too bingo lin you know it yeah harshal says inspire them rather than perspire about them absolutely what is your sadhana every day oh my sadhana mainly comprises meditation which i do not lose 
and japa my uh, repetition which is happening most of the time in my head so these are my main sadhanas apart from asana and uh, pranayama that happens but my core sadhana is meditation and my japa repetition thank you jordan okay last question hola uh, hi ofra okay any question last question last 30 minutes last 30 minutes no th- last 30 seconds sorry it was great thank you guru our meeting is uh, long overdue gurudeep so we'll we'll make that happen ha huh? okay thank you everybody this was a trial session and uh, i have no idea how it has come out but uh, um thankfully i have a good internet connection now after many many years so i can do such things what did you have for dinner today not not uh, had dinner yet dimpya okay so i will announce the next live uh, i am very happy uh, how it went and i loved to see my favorite people from around the world in this half an hour it was like a big party at home and i love this hi bethany beth hello uh i will announce the next live session uh four five days in advance and let's do it okay thank you thanks so much namaste